this is Sheridan from ProjectorSewing.com. Today I'm going to go over how to use your iPad and Affinity Designer 2 to calibrate and get started using a projector for sewing. First, going to change some settings. So go to your system settings, and then we're going to go down to display and brightness. And we want to change that auto lock down there. It's usually defaulted to two minutes, but we don't want it to dim or go to screensaver. That's going to mess up your calibration and your zooming. Um, you can choose 15 minutes or even never, and that's particularly for sewing uh, because you don't want it to go into screensaver. You'll have to reset your zoom and things, so it's just best to turn that off for now. So let's go ahead and close that down. Let's talk about how to download Affinity Designer 2. I already have it on my iPad, but I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to open up the App Store, and I am in dark mode right now, so sorry that, about that. And we're going to go ahead and type in... All right, we're typing in Affinity Designer. And once you've got that in there, you're going to see uh, lots of Affinity apps coming up. We specifically want to look at Affinity Designer 2, not Affinity Photo, and not Affinity Publisher. Make sure you are choosing Affinity Designer 2 for iPad, the vector um, graphic design program. That's the one we want to use. And go ahead and click download. You're going to get a free trial for 30 days. Um, so go ahead and get that downloaded. And if it's your first time opening it, uh, you're going to go ahead where it says want to start a trial. That's where you're going to go ahead and start your trial. If you've already purchased it, you can activate it using a code. Or if you want to purchase it now, you can do the buy now. So choose whichever one works for you. Try the free trial. You get 30 days um, if you like it. Otherwise, you uh, can just buy it right away if you know you're going to like it. Affinity Designer is a one-time payment of $19.99. Um, once you bought it, you've owned it, um, and you don't have to pay anything else. Um, they also have a universal license where you can buy a license to every program they have, which will include the desktop version of Affinity Designer 2, along with Affinity Designer Photo and Publisher. Once you open it, you will have any live documents that are in there. I have some documents already opened on my Affinity Designer, but you may not have anything on this page, and that is okay. The top button there is the Live Docs button, and that just shows you kind of like tabs on the desktop version uh, what files you have open. So you can always come back to the home screen and see what files and switch between them on the iPad just by coming to the Live Docs on the home screen. The next tab is the New Documents tab. If you want to create a new document or copy and paste something from your clipboard into a new document. The next one is uh, the Open tab, which you'll be using to open your patterns. Now you can choose open document or import document. We're not going to import from photos when we're using patterns. I usually choose import document because it will not overwrite the original file. Um, it will save a new file in the Affinity Designer iPad for you to work on. So that is usually what I choose so I don't accidentally change the file. And then these other ones, we're not going to really use a lot. The templates will pull up and try to find templates that you have saved. I haven't created any, but you can, if you have templates, you can use them. Probably not going to use it much for sewing. And the next one, um, again, those are just samples. Those are learning samples, so you can learn how to use Affinity Designer and the graphics. The Help menu uh, will go through all of the tools and the features. You can read about them and figure out how they work. So this is a good one to look at and read how it works. The next feature that you have down there is your account. You can click on that and see your account if you purchased or if you have trials. But let's look at the preferences because there's something very important in the preferences. We're just going to go to the general setting. And down on the right hand side, you're going to see a present on external displays. You want to turn that off. This is going to be very important as you are calibrating. You want to be able to zoom in on your screen. You have to turn that off so it will mirror your screen. 
Um, lots of the other things we're not going to go over right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at, you would normally open the document. I already have the calibration tool downloaded and saved to my drive. So I just went to my Google Drive and I opened this file. The calibration tool is available for free, um, offered on the link on my website. You can click the link down below in the video notes. Make sure you download the calibration tool. You will need it to calibrate your projector for sewing and, and using Affinity Designer. So I just found that and saved it on my drive. If you have Google Drive on your iPad already, it will appear here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the calibration tool in Affinity Designer. There is one thing you may notice on your screen that's a little bit different than mine, and that would be a little round circle on the bottom left-hand corner. So let me show you how you can turn that on and off. It's the three lines up by the Affinity Designer persona. And you can just click on those and toggle on and off the command uh, control. And that will turn that off again. So toggle command controller. That will turn it on and off. Okay, the next thing I want us to look at is the layers panel, and you'll find that on the right hand side, it looks like a stack of papers, we're going to click on that, and the layers of the uh, pattern or whatever you have pulled up will show. And what we want to do is we want to, for calibration, I want to lock these layers because I don't want to be accidentally moving the boxes around. So to lock this um, layer, we're going to go click up at the right hand corner where there's the three dots and we're going to come down where it says lock and when it's red you know it's locked if you click it again it will not be red and that will mean it's unlocked and you want to lock those again just so we're not moving the elements on the page as we're trying to calibrate click on the layers tab again and that menu that panel will go away and clear your screen Okay, now we're gonna make it go to full screen mode. There's that little corner button at the top that's just gonna clear your screen and have it full screen. Uh, you can zoom in and things on this page um, and then click it again and you'll bring all the toolbars back. I'm gonna show you another way to zoom besides your fingers. We can zoom in and out with your fingers, that's one way, but to get more accurate zooming, we wanna be able to type in our zoom and to type in our zoom we are going to be using the navigator panel the navigator panel kind of looks like a box with triangles on the side of it when you click on it it's going to come up and we're going to be focusing where it says zoom right now i already have a zoom percentage in there um, but this is where you can type in your zoom and when you get started uh, calibrating and you want to get down to the nearest tenth of a percentage this really helps you to kind of get in there you can type in any zoom amount whether it's a whole number or a decimal number and it will zoom to that precise zoom if you want to zoom again or check your zoom come back here check the zoom circle see what percent it is at and just to check if you accidentally zoomed in or out or you can keep zooming to calibrate so I can just click on that zoom again and type it in to calibrate. Okay, also in this navigator panel, you see our screen with a little gray rectangle that is our view area. This is a great way to move around on your pattern. Just click on that gray triangle and with your finger, move it to the area of your pattern that you want to view. And I do recommend this when you are navigating patterns, just because this will prevent you from accidentally zooming in or out when you are working with your pattern. For calibration, go ahead and get it centered right on the calibration tool because you're going to want it centered as you are calibrating and moving your mat to line up to uh, the red uh, crosshair lines as you calibrate. And you can go in and out of zoom a uh, full screen mode just by clicking that top corner. And if you leave your navigator panel open, you can check the zoom or go back and type it in really quick and then go back to full screen 
and check it and come back and forth. So it makes it really quick to jump between the two. I do recommend going to projectorsewing.com, the get started section to calibration. If this is your first time calibrating, it's gonna walk you through the steps of physically tilting your projector um, and getting it ready for sewing. This tutorial only went over how to use Affinity Designer to be able to zoom in and out, but you do need to square up your projector and level it to your cutting surface if you have not done that yet. And the directions are pretty thorough on projectorsewing.com, so make sure to check it out. I will put a link below. And thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I will get back to you. And it's always great for other people to see those comments as well. Oh,